Hello and welcome to a video on five ways to use a program called B-Tunes to make better DJ sets. This accompanies an article on digitaldjtips.com. It's linked to underneath and I thoroughly recommend you go and look at that article because there you'll find out a little bit of background and you'll also find out where to read reviews of this software and look at tutorials. This is their website and this has got a lot more information about the software on it and they also have quite an interesting news section that dives into a lot more detail about some of the uh, features of it. It really is a bit of a Swiss Army knife, but it's basically a helper program that's designed to help you alongside iTunes and or your existing DJ software to basically make better playlists. So on that premise, go and have a look at our article. It will make a lot more sense what you're watching now if you do. Uh, but having said that, let's get stuck in. So the first one I want to show you, the first use of B-Tunes is to um, make better music discovery playlists. Make playlists from your own music they help you to get to know that music a little bit better. What we're looking at here is my music collection, as well as all the usual stuff, name, artist, time. It's analyzed it for BPM, it's analyzed it for key. It will do that if you want it to, or it will just use the information already with the file. It's analyzed it with something called color, which is kind of like a songs with similar frequencies in them. They might well sound good together. It's also got some mood information, which it pulls from Last FM. If you don't know Last FM, it's kind of a crowdsourced music database. It's got transition information, which is very useful. I won't be going into that in this tutorial, but it helps you to plan DJ sets quite track by track and we will look at that in the next little video the next part of this video and then all the usual stuff genre and these tags here are from last fm as well all this stuff all this information comes when you analyze your tunes and there's a whole section called analysis in the software without analyzing your tunes b tunes can't really help you so that's a very important thing to do at the beginning as I say, they have good tutorials, we've got good reviews. That's not really what this is about. This is about stuff you can do with the software once you've got the hang of it. So, how to make a music discovery list. So what's the problem? Well, the problem here is you've got a lot of tunes and maybe you don't listen to them as much as you should. It's important to listen to your tunes. So, say you are a couple of days off a gig, a radio show, a mixtape, and there's a tune you really love. Uh, and you just want to find some tunes that might possibly go well with it so you can start auditioning them and so on. So. One of the things it has is what's called a match list feature. I can pick a tune and I can right click and go to new match list. And in that dialog box, I can choose a few rules to tell it how to find songs that might go with this one. This is different to iTunes because iTunes will give you very hard rules, you know, um, give me the tunes from the last 90 days or give me everything in this particular genre and so on. This is a lot fuzzier. It uses all that nice information the software has worked out about your music beforehand, that crowdsourced information, that sonic information, the key information, BPM and so on, to be a little bit more clever and to give you stuff that will probably give you more creative ideas than just a straight iTunes smart playlist. So there's a lot of rule sets here that will decide how it chooses tunes for you. And I've chosen one called Color Only. Uh, or I had done until I changed it by mistake there. Let's go back to it. And I'm just going to limit it to 25 songs. That's about the length of my morning commute. And say the match quality should be about 50%. It's going to give me a bit of variety there, uh, but not, uh, you know, not, not be too choosy, but at the same time, not be too random. And I'm going to click OK. And there's my list. It's generated a whole list of 25 songs here, which it thinks might go well with that seed song. So now in the left hand side, there's the word playlist highlighted. I can give that a name. Um, so let's just call it Saturday's Mix. And when I'm all done with that, I can go into iTunes. You'll see when I look in iTunes that immediately Saturday's Mix is here. It's done. These are the same tunes that have just been picked. It's instantaneous. And then of course I can plug in an iPod or whatever to my computer, get that mix on it. And there is my music discovery list from my own collection of stuff which might go well with that particular tune that's interesting me. So now let's look at how to build playlists for mixtapes or for individual DJ sets. Manually, in other words, building them track by track. This is further down the line than the last video where we were just roughly kind of grabbing some tunes to listen to when we're off doing something else. Typically, this will be done right before a gig or when you're trying to get a mixtape uh, through the door. So I'm going to show you a little feature here, which I haven't shown you yet. Uh, remember in the last video, the last part of this video, I showed you uh, the ways you can choose how it matches your tunes. Well, there's actually a way of choosing the default way it does it here. 
And this is in the preferences. You can see that you can choose weighting values for whether it looks for BPM or color or mood or genre. I'm going to just pick color only. As I said to you, I like this because my mixes tend to be freestyle. I don't mind about moving around the genres and stuff. But color gives me tunes that might well just work together in quite a clever way, sonically in other words. And forget everything else. It also works quite well for smaller collections and I tend to keep my collection quite lean. So that's how you can alter the way it does this stuff behind the scenes. Let's get back to my collection then and let's again pretend that I'm just about to pick a tune that I really love at the moment and I want to try and build a whole DJ set around it. So let's go and find something a little bit housey. Um, let's pick a nice mellow, um, a nice mellow track by Haim. Uh, a Psych Magic remix here. And I'm going to um, highlight that track and I'm going to go new playlist from selection. So here's my new playlist. This is the list I'm building up to either take to my gig with me or to build a new mixtape from. And I'm going to go to the first tune on there. And it gives me a whole load of suggestions underneath of stuff that might well work with it. Now I can highlight these tunes and I can play them at the top. There's a player. But when I find something that's going to work, I think might work, I can sort by key using these various functions here with lots of different key options. When I find something I think might work with this tune, I can grab it from the bottom here, highlight a tune there. So say that one was going to be the one I wanted. And there we go. There's the next tune potentially in my mix. Now what's quite nice here is it's telling me the keys are incompatible there on this transition column. Uh, that's okay. I don't mind that. There's, you know, there's a way I can get around that mix, but you can, uh, by looking at these symbols, these symbols tell you things like the genre change according to your own genres, uh, whether there's a speed change, <laughs> even tells you a change of decade if you're trying to stick to tunes which are in the same kind of time, you know, temporarily. Uh, but nonetheless, um, you know, these are all tools, not rules. You can have great DJ mixes that jump around the keys and decades and so on. But this is just to give you a clue as to whether this stuff might work. And I'm slowly building up a set here. Uh, for this particular mix. Again, when I go over to my iTunes, that set is there. And now this is ready for me to open in my DJ software and then I can try those mixes, see if they work, come back, change things and so on. Great way of building up mixtapes and a great way of getting a whole chunk of tunes that you're pretty sure are going to work well together for your next DJ set. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to keep your collection spick and span how to keep all those tags and all those titles and all that metadata totally up to date and the reason for this is quite simple if you're searching for a track in the middle of a DJ set there's 20 seconds left on the track that's playing you damn well want that track to appear immediately you don't want it to be lost because of a spelling error you don't want two or three versions of it to pop up and you've suddenly got no idea which is the one you should be playing you you need everything to be properly spick and span and ship shape so that you're prepared and you're not, you don't get any nasty surprises when you're using the search function in your DJ software and having perfect metadata is the way to do that. Now Btunes in the inspection tab has got an awful lot of stuff it can do for you. I'm just going to highlight three which I think are really useful although I've used nearly all of these on my collection at some point. You basically highlight the tunes you want to scan. I'd suggest all of them uh, and then you click the, the thing you want it to do to that collection. So duplicates is the first one. This will highlight like duplicate files using different techniques that can actually kind of listen to the file or just check with online data or whatever uh, and give you a chance to delete the ones you don't want. Really, really useful. Uh, another one that I love is misspelled stuff generally. So if you've got a misspelled artist name, you know, quite often there'll be there'll be full stops between acronyms. So like REM might have a dot after the R, a dot after the E and a dot after the M sometimes, but not at other times. Uh, you want to correct those so that when you search for the, the, the artist, they all appear at once. Uh, so highlighting and correcting those is a really good one and another one that I I find myself using all the time is rarely used genre this is really good if you've downloaded tunes from online stores that use genre names that you don't use and the reason this one's really good is if there's a genre you don't search for if you're looking for a disco set or a house set you know that's what you type into the search bar you don't want um, something whose genre is kind of disco dub house uh, to be in your collection because it won't appear when you search for a house you know, or your house music, you want it to appear in a genre that means something to you. So when you're searching by genre in this instance, but it could be by other things, uh, they're not slipping through the cracks. As I say, I've been through pretty much all of these. You you highlight the one you want, click go, and it'll just search through and, and, and give you all the issues. And it's up to you what you do about them. Uh, and I find it highly useful. It's something you should do. Certainly spend some time doing when you first use B-Tunes and then use it regularly from there on in just to make sure your collection is eminently searchable. Having it searchable is the main reason for doing this stuff and again any changes you make will appear instantly in iTunes. 
So another way that BTunes helps you to make better DJ sets is that once you've done all your work in here, because it works so closely with iTunes and because iTunes works so closely with most DJ software, your work is instantly available for you to use in your DJ software. So you can do stuff really quickly and get straight into mixing, saving time, and it just you, you're more likely to do it because it's so easy to do. I'll give you an example. That little set that I was just starting to make uh, a little while back is here. You've already seen that it's in iTunes. Same sets there, instantly in iTunes. And of course, when I now launch my DJ software, because my DJ software works, all DJ software works so closely with iTunes nowadays, down here in my library, there's that set. Now, if I've just done an hour's work on picking some tunes that look like they're going to mix really well together, plug my controller in and I'm off. There, there is my DJ set. It's so quick and easy to do. Having that fluidity between B-Tunes, iTunes and your DJ software is a real time saver. So the final way I find myself using BTunes, certainly since this time yesterday, because this is a brand new feature, is using the segmentation, um, auto segmentation of tunes, which has been there for a long time, where it just kind of works out where the choruses and stuff and so on are in your tunes, to auto play through a whole pile of new music. Now let me show you how that works. In the preferences, you have to go and install a special playlist, scan playlist plugin. When you've got the scan playlist plugin installed, in the controls menu, there is a new item called scan, and I'll show you what that does. Let's assume that this playlist that we're looking at here now is my new tunes. It isn't my new tunes. Instead, I've picked a load of tunes that you're probably going to know so you can much more clearly see how it works. When I go to controls and scan, it immediately starts playing the tunes, but not from the beginning. So it's playing Mr. Brightside by The Killers here. And you can hear it's jumped right to a big fat chorus section. So imagine this was a new tune. It's given me a chance to hear the bit that everyone probably knows. Next one, you got the love by the source. It's jumped to a bit right towards the end of the chorus and you're like, oh god, yeah, that's the one I wanted. As opposed to just somewhere near the beginning where it might just be beats. Uh, the next one, a little bit more underground, but... It has jumped to the chorus of this uh, of this tune. This Mike Snow remix of one of my favourites, actually. And the next one is actually 25 years old, believe it or not. But hopefully, I've not got this far in my rehearsals of this video. So there you go. It jumps to like a couple of seconds before the main chorus of the tune. And correctly identified it. So if these were new tunes. I'd be like, hey, yeah, that's the one I, re I recognise. That's the one I want in my DJ set. And you can grab it and drag it into your selection and so on. So that's how it works and you just turn it off by clicking stop scan. It's just basically a little plugin built on top of the existing um, automatic segmentation of your tunes which was itself really useful. Well that's it, that's my um, my five ways of using this software. I hope you found it useful. Please do go and read the main article over on Digital DJ Tips because that's where this stuff has gone into in a lot more detail and if you have found this useful why don't you subscribe to the channel. There's a whole lot more of this stuff on the channel. Thanks for watching. I've been Phil Morse for Digital DJ Tips.